Now, I want to take a few minutes to talk about how that circuit works. The circuit that you see on the board is not the exact circuit that I use in a demonstration. Before I can talk about the circuit that I actually use to get up to 100 volts, you need to understand the basics of how a boost converter circuit works. So here I'm using a 6 volt battery that is in series with an inductor, but the inductor that I'm using is actually a transformer since it has a large number of coils. You also need a diode. I'm using a silicon diode and also a high voltage electrolytic capacitor. The one that I'm using is a 400 volt capacitor because we're dealing with high voltages here and it can store a charger of 100 microfarads. And parallel to that, we have a voltmeter to read the voltage of the capacitor. So initially, while the switch is open, current is going to flow from the battery through the inductor to charge up the capacitor to a voltage of 6 volts. Now, when the switch is closed, current from the battery, that is conventional current, keep in mind electrons flow in the opposite direction, conventional current is going to flow through the inductor, through the switch, back to the battery. Now, whenever you apply an electric current to an inductor or another device that has coils of wire, a magnetic field will be created. The strength of the magnetic field depends on the number of coils of wire that the inductor has and also the amount of current flowing through the inductor. As the current increases, the strength of the magnetic field increases. Keep in mind, when the switch is open, after the capacitor is fully charged, there's no current flowing from the battery. But once you close the switch, the current doesn't go from 0 to 100%. It increases gradually. It happens fast, but it doesn't increase like this. It increases over time. This is a current time graph. So as the current increases, the magnetic field expands. During this process, the inductor is storing energy from the battery. Now, when the switch is released, this is a momentary switch. So after you press the button and release it, the circuit is now open. So there's no more current flowing in this circuit or in, in this segment of the circuit. So in that case, once that happens, the current that is flowing through the inductor decreases dramatically. And as a result, the magnetic field decreases. It collapses. As the magnetic field collapses in, the energy that was stored by the inductor is now being released. And that inductor will generate a high voltage across its terminals. And that high voltage that electric current will flow through the diode, charging the capacitor. And that's why the capacitor can gain a higher voltage than the battery. So energy is delivered to the inductor during the charging process as the magnetic field expands. When a magnetic field collapses, that energy is released and the inductor creates a high voltage that is stored by the capacitor. And that's how the circuit works. You can think of current as being converted into voltage. But during the first part, that is during the part where the current is increasing, the inductor is storing energy. So the sign will be positive on the left, negative on the right. So the sum total of the voltage by the inductor and the battery will be less than 6 volts. Now when this switch is open, and the current decreases, that's when we have case two, the polarity across the inductor changes. So now the voltage of the inductor and the battery is combined. They're not going against each other. It's additive. And so you get a higher voltage, which will translate across the capacitor. Now let's talk about the diode. The purpose of the diode is to allow the inductor to charge the capacitor, but to prevent the capacitor from losing that stored energy. As the capacitor gains a higher voltage than that of the battery, if the diode is not there, the capacitor can discharge 
back into this direction until the voltage of the capacitor equals the voltage of the battery. We don't want that. A diode allows current to flow in one direction. So this diode will allow current to flow from the inductor charging the capacitor, but it's going to block current in the other direction, preventing the capacitor from losing that stored energy by preventing current from flowing back to the left side of the circuit. So without the diode, this circuit will not work. It's very important to have that diode. Now let's talk about how we can increase the voltage induced by the inductor. The voltage induced by the inductor is equal to negative L times delta I over delta T. The triangle means change. So it depends on the rate at which the current is changing, how fast the current changes with time. So if you can increase L, the inductance of the inductor, you can increase the induced voltage. So that's why I chose to use a transformer because a transformer has a high inductance. It has a lot of coils of wire. The second thing that's going to impact the induced voltage is how fast the current is changing. If you can increase the rate at which the current is changing, you can increase the induced voltage. A constant current won't help us. A constant current will yield a constant magnetic field, and that's not going to generate any induced EMF. The magnetic field has to be changing in order to create an induced electromotive force. So the faster the current is changing, the faster the magnetic field will be changing, and thus we can generate a greater induced voltage. Now let's talk about the function of the momentary push button. If you push the button and hold it close, the current's going to increase and then it's going to be constant. So the voltage across the capacitor will get a small boost, but then it's going to stop. So you constantly have to press and release the momentary push button. So as you turn the switch on and off, the current is going to be changing. It's going to increase and decrease and increase and decrease. Every time the current decreases, the inductor will generate a high voltage and that's going to boost the capacitor. So every time the current goes down, the voltage of the capacitor is going to go up. Eventually, it's going to reach a steady state or a state of equilibrium. And that's going to be the maximum voltage that the circuit can generate. But to mechanically press this button constantly to increase the voltage, that's really not an effective way to uh, make a, a DC step up voltage circuit. One thing that you could do that works, a very simple design, is to replace the switch with a motor. As current flows through the motor, the motor has coils that will generate an induced EMF. So the current that is flowing in this circuit is not constant. It's constantly changing. It's increasing and decreasing. So let's say this is the current of the battery. The current will be oscillating around some fixed point. So because the current is decreasing and increasing, during the parts when it's decreasing, the inductor will generate a voltage that will charge up the capacitor. And I've tried this. I don't remember the exact number, but I believe I got a voltage around 50, 60 volts just put in the motor in that position. And you could actually try it out. It actually works. But now the circuit that I've used in a demonstration that you saw earlier in this video, here it is. So I have a battery and a transformer but being used as an inductor. And then I have the motor here, followed by the diode. Now attached to this motor is a transistor. But before that, I have a light bulb. There wasn't enough current for the light bulb to light up, but I was hoping that it would. But nevertheless, the circuit still worked. So I have the light bulb between the base of the transistor and the motor. The emitter is connected to the ground. Now the collector, I connected it between the light bulb and the motor. So this is the collector of the transistor, this is the emitter, 
and this is the base. And here is the electrolytic capacitor and the voltmeter that is parallel to that. So with this circuit design, as you saw in the demonstration, the voltage went up to 100. But if you keep the circuit on, the voltage will continue to climb. The maximum voltage that I got with this circuit was actually 140. So that was the highest voltage that was achieved with this circuit. But a funny thing started to happen. My digital multimeter began to act strange. I'm not sure why. Maybe I thought the battery was running out. I mean, the reasons could be different. But nevertheless, this circuit still works. You could still generate a high voltage across the capacitor. In fact, if you were to short circuit the capacitor, a very strong spark will be generated. So that's basically it for this video. So now you have a simple way of how you can create a circuit that can boost a six volt battery to well beyond hundred volts. Something else that you could do, I do want to mention this. You can connect the collector of a transistor to the inductor and connect the emitter to the ground. And then the base, you can connect that to another circuit, like let's say the 555 timer circuit, where it's gonna send a pulse, constantly turning the transistor on and off. And the frequency of that pulse will have an impact on the voltage generated. Because if you can increase the frequency, you can increase the rate at which the current is changing, thus increasing the voltage that will be stored on the capacitor. But this will require more circuit elements, but nevertheless, that's another option you could use in order to create a better circuit if you wish to do so.